Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Usually Tuesdays in the past were take a breath, and then Wednesday start up with your NFL talk. Now it's all right. We've moved on. Thursday's coming up here. Patriots and Jets. So Adam Kaufman, he got like eight hours sleep the last seven days. He's ready already for this game coming up on Thursday night. I know you are. Uh, thanks again for coming on Newswire. Oh, yeah. It's great to catch up with you. Well, let's address the elephant in the room. People who may be watching and seeing how I'm dressed and the Boston skyline behind me. I don't want you to just assume I'm a Patriots fan. Really, I'm just a big fan of Dave Sharapin. I feel like if he was coming on to talk about one game, he would look something like this. But uh, yeah, I just think it's I, I think this Thursday. Jets home opener. It's a fascinating game, really, for both teams with the way both have started off this year. And I know you were just having a conversation in the previous segment about how underdogs, you know, were so dominant over the course of week two. And we saw seven outright wins by dogs, including, of course, that Eagles collapse at the end of last night. The Patriots themselves, they knocked off the biggest favorite on the board in Cincinnati in week one. They very nearly and really should have beaten the Seahawks. That game went to overtime in week two. And the Patriots catching six and a half points at New York or technically in New Jersey here for this week three game. I'm not sitting here saying, of course, the Patriots are going to go out and win. But I do expect they're going to keep it close. So I would be very comfortable taking the points in this one. Yeah, I, I think as it pertains to New England, my opinion has not changed. I know you're not, not going to like hearing this. I still think the Patriots are going to have the worst record in the NFL at the end of the season. I could care less as to what I saw the first two weeks. I still feel that way, uh, you know, especially now that Carolina has finally gone to a guy that can win games 13 to 12. So that's going to ensure them winning like three <laughs> games or four. Uh, but, I, I, you know, the skill positions, I, I, the coaching is obviously fantastic in New England. That that goes without saying. That's what we're seeing. There's a big change, which is crazy, from Belichick. And honestly, I hate to say it, it feels like Belichick's last year maybe just threw his arms up because Mayo was just coaching a lot harder, making a lot more sound decisions. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, what I'm going to say is, Adam, eventually, as they say, the worm is going to turn. We're going to have 17 weeks in the NFL. <laughs> And nine of the weeks, the underdogs are going to cover more. And eight of the weeks, the favorites are probably going to cover more. So it's not to say that the Jets can't do it this week. But I am with you. Like, until I'm shown otherwise in the NFL, if the line is above two or three, I'm just not bleeping with it, man. Like, I, it's either I'm taking the other team or I'm waiting until there is some separation. Like, Adam, what is the big separation between the Patriots and Jets? They have a much better quarterback. They have a couple of much better wide receivers. They may have one or two players on the defensive end. They play 11 guys at the same time. And if there's only one or two that are different and a team is getting a touchdown, that's the way I got to look until somebody shows me something else. Yeah, I think in a lot of ways, I do look at these two teams and say, okay, if you go category by category, position by position, other than maybe coaching staff, which is, I guess, an indictment of Robert Sala, you have to give the edge in pretty much every category to the Jets. You do. But you also just look at what we've seen this year, and I don't think that can be discounted. You know, you can discount, oh, the Patriots are 6-1 and one against the Jets even since Tom Brady left. Well, look at who the quarterbacks were on both sides, quite frankly. You know, the, the Zach Wilsons and, you know, uh, what Joe Flacco was there for a hot minute. It, White, Tommy White, what, what was his first? Who cares? Mike White. These guys are gone. It's Aaron Rodgers. Mike White, thank you. Aaron Rodgers is there now. Now, has Rodgers looked like Hall of Fame Aaron Rodgers thus far? He hasn't, but, you know, he's only a couple games in after basically missing two years of football on the calendar. And so he's going to slowly find his way. He wasn't great against the Niners. Wasn't a problem necessarily, but wasn't great. And then in week two was marginally better. Garrett Wilson is uh you know clearly the best receiver on yeah, either course. team and alan lazard has had something of a resurgence it's just again going back to what we've seen the jets got destroyed by a much much better team in week one and they had to eke out a win in week two and you know credit them they did so and again the patriots are playing superior competition in a very very tough way to where again i expect this game to probably go under for starters and second to that I just think the Patriots are, they're live for an upset. They're absolutely live for an upset. I don't see how you couldn't say they're not. Uh, but I just think they're going to keep it close. I think we're going to see a, a tightly contested game where I do look at the Patriots as far as finding a strength. And I think their defense has been excellent, clearly. 
Gerard Mayo, like you said, he's coaching his butt off. The loss of Juwan Bentley now is a little bit problematic, but guys like Kyle Duggar and Keon Wong's over 200 yards rushing so far here in the young season. I think that he is going to have a great game. I would probably favor him over Brees Hall in this particular matchup. What the Patriots can do beyond that, I don't know, because we have seen the woeful inconsistency of the passing game in large part because of a terrible offensive line that really struggles to protect Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, and, and, and in addition to that, look, I, I think the Jets are the better team in this matchup, but people, if they, if they watch that game against the Titans, if the Jets fall down on the three and kick a field goal, they don't cover that game, and they did, and I think that's being factored into this spread. It seems high to me, six and a half. All right, NFL, uh, here are the guys who are hurt, Adam. You tell me, biggest impact player. It seems like the Rams have taken the biggest brunt of it thus far, if not the San Francisco 49ers. So Cup and Nakua both out. Looks like Cup is headed to IR. McCaffrey on IR, Pacheco on IR, Debo Samuel going to be out a couple of weeks. Now flipping over to a couple quarterbacks, two is going to be out, I would guess, a few weeks at least. Jordan Love could be back as soon as this week, but looks like next week they're targeting A.J. Brown this week and next. Uh, Mostert Addison to a lesser degree. Is it fair to say, I mean, San Francisco just feels like they have more talent than the Rams, so it's like I don't, for some reason, I'm just not as worried about them, but it feels like the Rams are in trouble. Absolutely. And I have a Super Bowl ticket on the Rams that I may as well tear up and use it to, you know, wipe up the dog's mess on the floor or something like that. That that ticket is not going anywhere without Cup and without Nakua and a banged up Stafford to boot. How much is Kyron Williams yeah. going to do by himself? The Niners, I just think they can kind of tread water and eventually they're going to be fine when those guys return. All right, Adam, enjoy the game Thursday. Thanks again for coming on.